Yo, this is Mad Professor Arriva Songs. I always tune in to Don Sinclair and the Unruly Cooley. Yeah, man, dubbing you crazy. Greetings each and every one. This is your girl Alison Mason representing Shining Stars and of course as always Don Sinclair Reggae Vibes for YouTube and today we are at the home of one of Europe's only black pioneer record company houses and record producers. No one other than Ariwa's Mad Professor. Greetings Mad Professor. Good day Alison. Greetings to you. Well, you are welcome here at Don Sinclair Reggae Vibes at YouTube. And it's an honor to have you here, Professor. So, can you let all the fans and all the listeners worldwide know what inspired you to start and what year did you start? Okay, well, uh, I was inspired by a love for technology. Mm -hmm. And the, the then technology was like... A light bulb and um, <laughs> and a radio, <laughs> so it was quite basic technology, mm -hmm. and I was curious as to how the light bulb worked, and I asked my mom, and she said, "Go to the library, get a book, and read." Mm -hmm. And then I said, uh, "What's the man doing in the radio? I want to see the man in the radio." <laughs> She said, there's no man in the radio. <laughs> and I didn't believe her. So I went to the back of the radio, opened it up, mm -hmm. and looked for the man. <laughs> and all I saw was some resistors and capacitors <laughs> and diodes. And right. then she came in, she was in her, she came in, gave me two licks. I said, <laughs> go to the library, get a book, and you read about the radio. So that's it. And what year, what year did I start from? Mm -hmm. um, electronics or? Um, or we could say, what year did you start your studio? Oh, or oh, the studio started officially around 1979. Wow. 1979. Mm -hmm. Great longevity, seriously. Mm -hmm. And where did the name Ariwa come from? Ariwa. Well, Ariwa started in, um, the name came from when I was working with some electronic guys. Mm -hmm. I was working at a rediffusion company mm -hmm. in Wandsworth and there's this tall guy from Nigeria, right? His name was King Paul and I said to King Paul, give me a name because I was kind of Afro, mm -hmm. Afrocentric, yes, you know. Yes. I, you know, I needed an African name mm -hmm. and he gave me a couple of names. I took one of them which was Ariwo, A-R-I-W-O. I said, yeah, but I like this name, but I don't like the O or the N. I'd rather put the A. So change the O to A, and I called it Ariwa. Ariwa. And yeah. give us that meaning once more, please. Ariwa. Ariwa means communication. You know, in fact, when when people want to, like, call each other sometimes and say, Ariwo, Ariwo, ah. and it's a Yoruba name. Mm -hmm. So it's from... West Africa, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Nigeria, Yoruba. Very powerful, and of course a great, um, a great name because of course communication is how we are communicating with the music. Absolutely, and it all tied in very definitely. well. Definitely, very well, Alice. Thank so, how did you start producing, my professor, and what gave you mm -hmm. the motivation to stick with it? Well, I started producing because there were a lot of musicians coming around, you know. Mm -hmm. The studio was in my front room, and um, every Sunday I'd have musicians come, come in and playing, dropping rhythms, and I was mm -hmm. like trying to learn different mm -hmm. things about the sound. And then, um, as the musicians would bring artists, and then the artists would say, Well, I have a song for this, you know, and I want to sing this. Mm -hmm. and, and then it grew into um, me recording. The, the 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 artist and people like Sister Audrey mm -hmm. would come around. She was one of the first ones. Um, Sergeant Pepper, they were, you know uh, Sandra Cross. They all started to come around, mm -hmm. um, and then gradually they started to. Pre they said, "Well, I released this." Deborah Glasgow, mm -hmm. she was one of the first as well. We was gonna okay, mm -hmm. put 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 her out, and then um, so Sergeant Pepper had the first 
release, which mm -hmm. we're quite excited about. And then, but the record bombed. It ended up costing me <laughs> costing me a lot of money <laughs> at that time. But hey, that's that's, that's the business. That, but that's the, business. the love of it, and you know, which ties in, which gives you the motivation to stick with it. Because as you said, you know, you don't always come up. So what keeps you going? Well, in those days, you know, it was a competitive. Okay, maybe now it's still competitive, but mm -hmm. in those days, our main competition was like um, Dennis Brown, Bob Marley, uh, you know, Gregory Isaacs, mm -hmm. all all the names. So mm -hmm. I would I would make a record, and I would have like my record say uh, by Sergeant Pepper, mm -hmm. Deborah Glasgow, or whoever a new artist, mm -hmm. and then. Um, this will be competing with, like, say, waiting in vain, or um, Dennis Brown sitting and watching, and you know, of course, all the all the Jamaican artists would be recorded in state of the art studios, yes, yes. sung in everything mm -hmm. in the right place, and my stuff would be recorded in my front room <laughs> <laughs> by a guy who wasn't sure what he was doing. <laughs> So that's, mm. but um, yeah, so didn't really stand much a chance, mm. much of a chance against the big boys. But, you know, I really loved music and I love technology. So mm -hmm. I stuck with it and teach myself, taught myself different things, you know. Good. Good. Yeah. Now, with all the music producers in the world, <clears throat> what made you think you would be successful in this field? I didn't think I was going to be successful. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I was hoping, mm -hmm. but I didn't really think so because, you know, I had no family in the business, mm -hmm. or, you know, nothing. I didn't know anybody in the business. So, I mean, I just jumped in and started to swim, you know, <laughs> hope, hope that I would stay afloat, you know. Good. Okay. Did you have any doubts in your mind that you weren't going to be successful? You know, I didn't even think about it. Good. <laughs> I think when just... I just I just went into it and I just loved music. I mm. was renting the studio. I had different bands coming in, like rock bands and punk bands mm -hmm. and all sorts of people coming in. But I didn't stop to think Good. whether I'd be successful or not. You know? To me, successful meant being around to do the next session tomorrow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's success. Love that. Very inspirational for anyone out there thinking about setting up on their own. Now, what did you have to sacrifice, my professor, to make your business happen? Uh, <clears throat> I had to sacrifice first my front room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I had, I had a wife who uh, was um, who, whose mother was saying, "Boy, it's better if we get a nice three-piece suite <laughs> for the front room." And what's what's this nonsense about um, doing uh, music? Doing music in the front room. <laughs> Well, say so I sacrifice, sacrifice a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had, um, <clears throat> I was into electronics and I couldn't wait to get out of that job mm. and start to do music full time. Mm. Well, that's that, you know, it's a lot of sacrifice, man. A normal mm. family life, yeah, you, yes. you know, you sacrifice that. So. Now that you've made that sacrifice, and of course, you know, the house of Ariwa is world renowned. How did you build your contacts and your clients? Um, you know, as you go on, mm. things just grow. You mm. know? And they say, um, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Mm -hmm. But as you carry on, you just furnish new contacts. Mm -hmm. And some some people might like this one, and they might like this one, mm -hmm. and then you do the next one, and then you find everybody. You, you know, you just carry on. Mm -hmm. You know, and contacts come, and people come, and people go, and you just do what you believe in. And from right. you believe in something, you just jump into it and you do it. You do it. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Mad Professor, you've been here. I'm going to show the people your catalogue here. You've been here in Thornton Heath for over 34 years. Yeah, yeah. You've in been this in this yeah. building. Yeah. Now, it's a long list, I know. But can you name some of the artists you have worked with and some of the sound systems? Artists I've worked with is like the aforementioned Sister Audrey, Sergeant Pepper, Sandra Cross, Aisha, uh, Johnny Clark, Uroy. Wow. Uh, loads, lo loads of different people. Big Youth, mm -hmm. you know, Luciano, yeah, Sly and Robbie. Oh, yeah. wow. We well, work with a lot of people. Endless, yeah. endless. And if yeah. you want to know more, Just check out Decker. the catalog, right? Yeah, man. And what about the sound systems that you've worked with? Yeah, man, we work with a lot of sound systems, you know, mm. like Moambasa, Shaka, Saxon, you know, all of them. Abashanti, mm -hmm. Channel One, you know. Everything. Brilliant. Endless yeah. list, endless yeah. list. Now, if there was one word, my professor, that you could use to explain your experience so far while working as a music producer, what would that word be? Phen phenomenal. Phenomenal, brilliant word. Mm, yeah, because you know, um, when you come into this, you don't expect mm -hmm. anything, you know, and yet every day is like being in a movie, you yeah. Know? It's like today, <laughs> today is a different day from yesterday. Today, mm -hmm. I'm now with Alison, I'm now with Don Sinclair, you know, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't with them yesterday, yeah, so you know, it's a movie that is excited you know um, one thing you yeah. know the music industry yeah, so. it is really exciting and a lot of people are fascinated by it you know by the the glamorousness of it but it's not all glamorous glamour glamour <laughs> is in fiction fiction <laughs> but the, the, the reality is mm. not glamour mm -hmm. it's a heavy business for like finances yes. you got to be spending a lot right yeah you could i mean you hear the stories of some people who made like millions doing this and that but mm -hmm. those are rare stories yes. the reality is most people in the music business do not make millions mm -hmm. you spend a lot of money very true it's the love and the dedication and the passion that you have as yeah. well Paul. you gotta love it mm -hmm. right. definitely now if you could come up with one habit that could possibly ruin or stall a person's career, what would that downfall be? A habit? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess too much ego. <laughs> true, true. But mm -hmm. um, that could definitely ruin a career. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, I ought to drink too much or take too much drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that could. That could mess you up. Mm -hmm. I don't true. know really, but I think probably the ego might be more damaging. Definitely, definitely. How do you remain so humble, my professor? Me? Mm. I've got all the reasons to be humble. I who have nothing. I who have no one. Mm -hmm. But love for music. Love that. That's it. Beautiful philosophy. Yeah. Now, as we were just saying, Maintaining a successful career takes a lot of work and commitment. How much time do you dedicate towards your work? Twenty-four hours. Mm -hmm. I wake up with ideas. I go to sleep with ideas. Twenty-four hours. Mm -hmm. You don't switch off. You could be in bed, and you suddenly get up and you say, ah inspiration yeah <laughs> blah 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 mm -hmm. yeah yeah you don't switch off no time at all real dedication what steps my professor did you take to advertise and get your business out to the people well to be honest Alison when you start like how I start mm -hmm. you've got no advertising budget so Very advertising true. don't look into it you mm -hmm. just I mean, it took me a little while before I started to advertise, like in Echoes. And yes. When I started, there were no pirate radio, so I couldn't even advertise <laughs> on the radio, you know? Mm -hmm. You just you just don't advertise. You just, 
you just let the music speak for itself. Do good music, and uh -huh. people would find you. Right. I mean, in in the first place, some of the artists used to think, "Boy, prof, promote promote it more, man, promote it more." Mm -hmm. Until we made like the first set of hits, then we realized people would come to us and say, "Hey, I heard this record. Right. This was a good record." Blah, mm -hmm. blah. And then and then you turn and say, "You know that record?" And then they say, "Yeah." And then you realize once you make a good record. You don't have to tell people. People tell you about, about the record. Yeah, man. The power of good music. Good music. The power of good music. Now, Mad Professor, you know, there are times in a career when life isn't going your way. Mm. How do you keep your mind on your work without losing focus? How? When <laughs> things aren't going your way. Well, sometimes you have to leave it alone. Sometimes you have to ease off mm -hmm. and just... Go and do something else, mm -hmm. and you know there 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 have been times like that. Like even when I left Peckham to come here to this present yes. studio, yes. you know I was I was burgled in Peckham. I was gonna give it up. Mm -hmm. I thought enough is enough. It's gonna leave, and then mm -hmm. I give it up. And then I was traveling every day. I used to live cross road, and every day I'd come out the road and I'd come down White Horse Lane. And then I looked one day and I saw, ah, there's a building available. Let me let me try it. And then slowly I got sucked back into it. Slowly. Once it's slowly. within you, it's it's calling yeah, you. Yeah, it's calling yeah. you. You can't get away. Next thing I know, I'm back back in business at White Horse Lane. <laughs> <laughs> right. What other producers, songwriters, and or artists do you see as your primary inspirations? Well, I'm inspired by Motown. Mm. If you look at the whole Arriva thing, you'll see like there's a Motown type of vibe. And I used to like, I mean, I love the song, I love the consistency in the song, and mm -hmm. the fact that it was really a uh, um, customized mm -hmm. studio with customized equipment, and they built up. Um, as well as Motown, I really like, like, uh, Duke Reed, um, Treasure I like Joe Gibbs, mm -hmm. I like Studio One, uh, I like Philadelphia International. Yes, yeah, yes. So those, those are my mm -hmm. primarily. Well, you know, anyone who's visited um, the Ari Ariwa Studios here, it's plain yeah. to see that you've modeled up of Tamla Motown. Okay, Definitely. right. It right. is plain to see. So, okay, you know, good. now, my professor, you are heavily involved with the reggae on the media campaign. Can you tell us about that? Well, you know, reggae on the media is a campaign to reflect uh, the antiquated way the media has been dealing with reggae mm -hmm. as a whole yes. and somehow in the spectrum of music reggae is it's like there's a blind spot mm -hmm. people don't notice reggae very true you know you could look at several articles even black people when they talk about black music mm -hmm. they forget reggae and yet for years you know it was only reggae it was only reggae in England as black music. And Very yet, true. everyone seemed to forget about mm -hmm. reggae. Mm -hmm. And um, so, myself and a few others, we started this campaign to bring more attention to reggae. And not just reggae, because some, mm -hmm. a lot of time when you say reggae, people think, oh, reggae is from Jamaica. But we said, no, reggae is made right here in England. Loads of reggae artists from right here in England. Very true. And they tend to fall through a gap. Mm -hmm. There's a blind spot mm -hmm. where you could see there and you could see there, but you don't see here. And you know, the BBC in particular is guilty mm -hmm. of um, of that of of um, that gap, uh, creating that gap. Yes, because gap is sad because a lot of the artists here are very talented people very true mm -hmm. and they need some encouragement they need to get people playing this stuff i mean it's on the you know we've got 24 hours a day to transmit stuff and yet mm -hmm. we don't we don't get transmit unless mm -hmm. you 
hassle somebody. And this gap even started with um, Choice FM. Yes. When Choice FM was there, they're the ones who ignored a lot of the local artists. Mm -hmm. They did the black community a big injustice. Mm -hmm. Alongside with this gap also come the problem with um, like black and black crime. Mm -hmm. Black and black crime really and truly was encouraged by white caretakers in the business who get a kick out of promoting this aggressive kind of music. Mm -hmm. And they would never want to play to play a love song. Yet we, we were making loads of love songs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we really needed to bring the BBC and the Ofcom people bring their attention to this problem we have within Definitely. within the community. It's Definitely. a serious And especially serious you know, within problem. this climate and at like twenty twenty we we should be reflected. Of course. We should be reflected. Of Absolutely. Course. Now Matt Professor, do you have a message for Don Sinclair Reggae Vibes at YouTube about the work that he is doing? Well, this is a phenomenal um, thing that Don is doing. Because Don is he is archiving a lot of vital information. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And people need to see what's going on. People need to have it recorded and have it um, treasured, you know. Mm -hmm. And even so, now it may not be obvious the importance mm -hmm. of such a role, mm -hmm. but in time, yes. this will be proven to be very important because mm -hmm. one thing you can do is go back mm -hmm. and us as human beings I mean yeah if we could go back to say 1984 and do an AB comparison with 1984 to um, 2004 or even mm -hmm. 2020 I mean it would be amazing so the nearest thing we could do we could encourage people like Don to mm -hmm. record and polish it up, mm -hmm. good quality, and be ready, ready for the world because Definitely. the next generation need to see what the older generation mm -hmm. were doing. Yes, laying yeah. the foundation yeah. stones. Yeah. yeah, so it's a good thing he's doing, man. Thank you. Well, it just leaves me, Alison Mason from Shining Stars, to say thank you so much, my Professor, for giving us your time here at Ariwa today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. So thank on behalf you. of myself, thank you all. And do remember, Don Sinclair, Reggae Vibes at YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe.